There we go. Here we go. That was for the ball. It's just in the board. Joey is a bit smiling. He's I smiling, think, yeah. yes. Well, Joey won the ball. Um, it's quite funny what amateur darts. Of course, Joey is an amateur as well. But he played darts on a high level. I think when Joey saw that first dart to the ball, Joey thinks that's going to be an easy start of the day. But you never know. We saw the first game of the day at 11 o'clock. Derek Telnikus was nearly out in the first game on the TV board. So it is it is really hard for players. I hear that quite a lot. If they come for the first time to the TV lanes to play there, there's people in the back watching you. You know that you are on a stream. You know that people are watching you from home. They do get a get a few nerves, and people that are that have played before on bigger stage have an advantage if they play there. I played on the TV lane yesterday. And were you nervous? I wasn't nervous, but I didn't feel comfortable. No. But the result was the same, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just had a conversation about the organization and stuff. But when you had that long conversation, I think half of the chat was out because of the stream was out. So, can you do a short version? How is it to organize an event like this with well, 3,000 dart players or first, four 3,000 dart players? First of all, it's good fun to organize an event like this. It takes quite a lot of time and there's a lot to do. And then you can think of things with local authorities. With oh. By the way, that's a one score from Giovanni Tello. Someone has to do it. He is smiling to people in the background from what's going on. Okay, carry on. That was quite funny. <laughs> there he goes again. Oh. No, it's it's quite a lot of work. We have to uh, make a lot of arrangements, obviously, with sponsors, with the locations, with various partners that we work with, um, with local authorities. Um, it's not so easy. It, it, it already starts if you come here uh, on the parking where people stand to show where the parking is and uh, so many cars everywhere so we have to deal with local authorities um, and then you come into the venue and you can see yeah you can have a, a drink in a party tent it needs to be built up we have 170 lanes here it all needs to build up and everybody needs to know in a planning when they can start building up because uh, for the Sunday we, we have so many lightning in the roof of the venue obviously that needs to be done first before they can start building up the lane so it's a, a really big planning beforehand to organize all this um, it's a bit of a puzzle but yeah it's good fun as well and the good thing is it's not the first time that we are here in this fantastic venue the Bonte weaver and us and, and of course you did it for a couple of years but we had a little practice a couple of weeks ago for the world masters exactly yeah it was a little bit smaller though it was well. It was quite an easy event for you guys. Yeah. It was only 90 boards, 70 boards. How many 70, boards? 70. Yeah. 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 In a lot of other countries, they think 70 boards. That's but yeah. I already explained. We play darts on 170 boards here. Here in the front, the guy with the puzzle shot, Jarno Bottenberg. He was the big surprise of the Lakeside qualifiers a couple of weeks ago. We will see him playing at the lakeside who's going to start on the 2nd of December Joey Tamburre already 1-0 up he's playing on cruise control so who do you expect tomorrow on the stage here in the quarterfinals with the men what is the name that you think that we can definitely expect there well, I always say that the defending champions has a big chance to, because everybody is, well, not the big names, but nobody wants to play Jelle, because he's defending champion, and he did really well yesterday, because he made it to the final with Chris Landman, also really good player. So I'm going to say at least four Dutch guys are going to play in the quarters, and Jelle is one of them. Um, James Hurrell. And some random country you think 
like Czech or Poland or... And Belgium? Yeah. Yeah, maybe Belgium. Yeah. So four Dutch. James Hurrell, maybe Neil Duff, if he had a good day. A Belgium guy and a random country. That's my... And I think Bo Greaves in the ladies, because she is unstoppable at the yeah. moment. She's really good. Last weekend she played in Romania. She lost one leg. Yeah. So she's also the defending champion here at the Dutch Open Darts. Yeah. Joey is for going for double eighteen. Oh. He has plenty of time. So here's Tamberger for double one. Ooh. And that's a famous no score. And next to me, finally out of his bed, just having breakfast, is the man from Scotland, Anthony Dundas. He will take over after this next match. And he will talk you through for the next hour or so. And there finally is double one for Tamberger. Giovanni in the background is shaking his head. Laughing. Laughing. Don't worry, mate. It's one leg to go and you can go to the beer tent and it's all forgotten. It's all good. That's the beauty of the Dutch Open. Everybody, especially the amateur players, they really think they have a chance to progress to Sunday. But every 20 minutes, 128 players go out and then it's party time for them. Yeah. If you've never been here, the party tent here with the Dutch Open is probably bigger than all the other venues in the world who have open tournaments. I believe the party tent is 50 meters by 20 meters. And uh, yeah, a lot of people fit in there for sure. A couple of thousand. That's a quarter of a football field. Exactly. And that's only the party tent. Yeah, but you. And then we have another bar street with the famous schip. Yeah. People that have been here yeah, the definitely will know about that. Yeah, the boat. Yeah. Everybody who's come to the Dutch Open, of course. You need to play a game. The beer tent is a good experience. And the boat, well, everybody needs to have at least one drink at a boat. Always good fun. And if you like Dutch music, it's definitely fun. And if you don't like Dutch music, don't go there. That's my advice. So... Giovanni, maybe this is the last three darts of his Dutch Open. Are we getting an 170 yeah, here? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. No, that's a bit too much for Mr. Tamberge. Nice treble visit, leaves himself 74 when he returns. So Tamberge for 74, 20, four tops. And that's the double one, so he will return for double 19. So I'm going to leave after Ooh. this game. I want to thank Paul for a little chat, and maybe we'll... Thank you, Marco, for all your work. And maybe we talk to you later, or we get someone else, because you're the boss, so maybe find someone else to, talk, to have a chat with Anthony and me, especially for the people at home. I will do my best. So, Mr. Tamberger for double eight. Yep. And there is the double eight. So, Giovanni Tello, it was fun to play on a TV game. He said probably it wasn't my day. Well, now the day is going to start at a party tent. Joey Tamberger is still running for the last 128 on Sunday. And I will give the mic over to Mr. Anthony Dundas.